Are you ready to take the lead in the dance of life? Fall in love with who you are right now and find uninhibited joy every day? Then it's time for you to flaunt your smart, sexy, and spiritual self. Join radio host Laura Cheadle and learn how the five steps of flaunt can help you quit seeking approval, proving your worth, and release you from the judgment of others. Express all that you are, discover your naked self-worth, and finally, enjoy the life you've worked so hard to create. Hello, you're listening to Flaunt, Build Your Dreams and Live Your Sparkle. This is the podcast for women who are ready, women who are really ready to let go of all of the things in the past that have been holding them back or bringing them down, whether it's personal or professional or just something weird inside. This is the podcast that really will help you get to the next level. I'm Laura Cheadle, and I am a fully recovered corporate attorney turned life choreographer, burlesque dancer, and author. What I do is I help women who feel betrayed by life, women who just feel like, are you kidding me? I have worked so hard and I have tried so hard and things are just not working out for me. I help women who feel that way, who feel betrayed by life or maybe like me have been betrayed by a partner. I help them untangle themselves from that pain, from that story, from the actions of other people. And then I help them reclaim they're sexy. And if you're thinking, wait, sexy, what? What, 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 what? Sexy has to do with two things. It has to do with attraction and arousal. Your attraction to things that you like. Like we want to be attracted to our food, don't we? <laughs> we want to be aroused by conversation. We want to feel attraction and arousal when we go to work, when we deal with our families, when we're just reading a book. And having some self-care, we want to be attracted to that self-care. We want to be aroused by that self-care. So that's what I mean by embracing your sexy. It's figuring out what you are attracted to and what arouses you and then how to do those things. So you can re-choreograph life on your terms. So you can fall into bed every night feeling satisfied deeply about your day and what you have accomplished. So you can wake up every day with energy and enthusiasm, looking forward to what's to come. And so you can feel joy throughout the day, no matter what happens, no matter if you're still dealing with that original betrayal, whether it's this long-term process and you're untangling yourself from a partner or a relationship, you can still feel joy. You can still be happy. And that's what this show is about. And that's what I am all about. Our topic for today is dance. And you might be thinking, wait, what? What does dance have to do with any of that? Oh my goodness. Let me tell you. Dance has everything to do with how you feel. Broad statement here, but it's true. Every human culture throughout time has danced. Let me say that, I, say that again. Dance has been a part of every culture throughout time. Wow. Sit with that for a minute. That is pretty powerful. There are fads that come and there are fads that go and there were things that we do and there's things that we don't do, but we as humans have always danced. Now dance also is very closely related to music. I don't want to break some of that down a little bit. Music has a rhythm. It's got a beat. It can go slower. It can go faster. And dance 
is really just synchronizing our movements with that beat. So you've got the music, clap, 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 whatever it is, and it's synchronizing our movements so we can move in time to that beat. Now think about this. Part of the reason that animals don't dance is because animals don't have a sense of rhythm. When was the last time you saw your dog clapping his paws in time to music? You haven't because they don't. Now I could hear you saying, wait, 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 Laura. I have seen so many dancing animal videos. Yes, yes, you have. If you start doing the research around that, most of the dancing animal videos are the animal mimicking the human. So the human is bouncing to the music and the animal is mimicking the human. There's a ton of interesting research around this. And not too long ago, there was actually a, I'm looking up what he was, a cockatoo, a cockatoo named Snowball that really did appear to be dancing because when they would slow down the music, he would slow down his bouncing. And when they would speed up the music, he would speed up. Fortunately, Snowball <laughs> was owned by some scientists and they actually did some research around it. And they concluded that it was just random and that sometimes he would get into that beat and that sometimes he would mimic people because humans move to music without thinking about it. If you've ever been driving along, listening to music, you might find that you're tapping the steering wheel or you're moving your shoulders or you're tapping your feet. We move to music without thinking about it. It's like this biological brain thing that humans have and it's uniquely human. There's also some studies around honeybees and that honeybees use dance as a way to communicate with each other. And they do, but it's not that they have a little drummer bee out there drumming for the other bees to keep time too. Honeybees use dance as a way to communicate, but they don't synchronize their movement with music. That synchronization, that moving in time, that is uniquely human. And that is why dance is so powerful. Dance is powerful. Again, I hope you're kind of going, hmm, what? Okay, cool, Laura. Cool that we can bounce to music. Yeah, that is really unique. Wow, cool that we've done that forever, but there's a lot of things that we've done forever too. Dance is different. I've got my little list of stuff here <laughs> that'll tell you why. But especially right now, especially because of COVID and the fact that many of us are sheltering in place to some degree or other, dance is really important. Dance is something that humans use as a method of communication. Bonding. We bond through dance. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more because like I said, especially now with COVID, it's incredibly important for us to understand and to utilize dance as a way to connect. It's also really important when it comes to ceremony or ritual. Think back to like rain dances and finding your mate dances and wedding dances. So many cultures, even now, we have the first dance at the wedding, the, you know, father-daughter dance, the mother-son dance, the, um, all these different rituals around dance. Dance is also something that can be used for healing. And oh boy, we're going to talk a lot more about that. And then last, but certainly not least, dance is a method of expression. 
And it feels so good to express. And something that I do a lot with the people that I coach is I work on expression because women, mostly I work with women, tend to feel very shut down sometimes. They can't say something. They want to bite their tongue. They don't want to offend. They don't want to say something and then be called out on it because they didn't know it. We limit our expression. And also, if you go through the history of our culture, a patriarchal culture, women's expression has been limited. Whether you think about in terms of sexual expression, women need to be modest. Whether you think about it in terms of safety, women can't wear different short skirts or things like that because they don't want to get raped. We are constantly having our self-expression limited. Can't wear this at work. Can't say that at work. Your hair, your makeup, your shoes, those are all different ways of we can express ourselves. And dance is one of those ways too. So before we go back through communication, bonding, ceremony and ritual, healing and expression, ah, I've got the best news ever for you. (laughs) All of April. Every single week in April, I think there's five weeks in April, I am putting my online dance classes for free. You, my listeners, get a free month of dance classes. Yes, you heard that right. You get a free month of dance classes. There is no reason for you not to participate. It's on Zoom. You can keep your camera off if you really want to, but because of that communication (laughs) and connection piece, I hope you turn your camera on. Let me tell you the details because I know you are going to want to participate all month in free dance classes. Also, it's spring. We've all been inside all winter long. And if you're anything like me, I'm ready to get my summer body out there. I'm ready to get into shape, to drop a little bit of weight, to start feeling a little bit better and a little bit more active. And a month of free classes is the perfect way to do that. And again, it's on Zoom. It's on Zoom. You don't have to drive. You don't have to park. You can show up in your jammies. You can do whatever works for you. All right, let me tell you about my two classes because they're going to be so much fun. Every Friday, every Friday, I have got a burlesque and bubbly class. Burlesque and bubbly is a really fun class. And if you think about it in terms of those five things that we were talking about, it's about expression and it's about bonding. Burlesque and bubbly is a dance class for women of all ages, all sizes and all abilities. You do not need to know how to dance at all. That's why you're here. I will teach you. Burlesque and Bubbly is about 45 minutes of a very lightly choreographed dance class. So you're going to learn a sexy dance routine. It's going to be so much fun. You've got the song and then I'll teach you the routine and you can practice and you can modify as necessary, but it's so much fun. And then the last 15 minutes of class, we have a deep discussion because it's about connection. And we talk about how we feel when we moved. Did we feel awkward? Did we feel like we were doing it wrong? Did you feel like everybody else was sexier and prettier than you were? Did you feel threatened? Dance brings up emotion. Do you feel sad? Do you feel glad? Do you feel like now you wanna dance for someone or dance with someone? Or do you feel like this is something that you just want to do privately for you? We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about all of those sensations that come up. And yes, people sometimes cry. They sometimes see themselves on the Zoom screen and they see how pretty they are. And they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I was pretty. I had no idea that moving like this would bring up emotions and that I would see myself in this beautiful, sensuous, 
connected way. Burlesque and bubbly will make you fall in love with your body. And I do mean that. And I don't care if you think you're 60 pounds overweight, if you think you are old and out of shape, I don't care if you've got lumps and bumps and scars, you will fall in love with your body. You absolutely will fall in love with who you are. And let me tell you the secret. We take better care of things that we love. We take better care of clothing that we love than things that we hate. We take better care of our homes or our cars when we love them. When we think something is an old junker, we don't take great care of it. Falling in love with your body helps you to take better care of your body. It just does. So Burlesque and Bubbly is every Friday, every Friday in April, It is at three o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Mountain, five o'clock Central, and six o'clock Eastern. It's for one hour every Friday. Think about it as your happy hour dance class. Think about it as your kickoff into the weekend. Burlesque is about stripping down and this is about stripping out of the stress and the pressure of the week so you can move into the weekend with joy, freshness, fun, and the ability to really recharge. So join me every Friday for free for Burlesque and Bubbly, three o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Mountain, five o'clock Central, six o'clock Eastern. Yay! I can't wait to see you there. It's a lot of fun. Prepare to laugh and have a great time. The second free class that I'm offering all April long is Yoga Lesk. Yoga Lesk is every Sunday morning. Sunday morning at 8 Pacific, 9 Mountain, 10 Central, and 11 Eastern. And it's a one hour dance class. And Yoga Lesk combines the energy of the chakras, the power of yoga with the creativity of burlesque. Yoga Lesk is truly about healing. It's about expression and healing, healing through the chakras, healing through the energy, healing through the body. So instead of just processing something on a mental level, you're bringing it into your heart, bringing it into your body. You're purifying and cleansing your energy field. You're getting in touch with all of those different chakras and the energy around them and the moves. And you're allowing yourself to express and to heal, whether it's rage or shame or grief. Or even if it's joy and celebration, yoga lesk is the thing that will help you. And it's free (laughs) every Sunday in April, 8 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Mountain, 10 o'clock Central, and 11 Eastern. Join me on Zoom for yoga lesk. Heck, join me on Fridays for Burlesque and Bubbly and join me on Sunday for Yoga Lask. It will change your world. I kid you not. You will start April feeling one way. By the time April ends, you will be feeling a completely different way. And I promise. Now I'm sure you're going, oh my gosh, Laura, I'm in, I am all in. How do I get this magical, powerful, and elusive Zoom link? Well, let me tell you, all you need to do is go to www.flaunt, F-L-A-U-N-T, studios with an S, flauntstudios.com. I'll say that again. Go to flaunt studios.com. Put in your email address and I will send that Zoom link to you before the class. 
So that way you will get a reminder the day before with Zoom link. So the day before each class, you will get the Zoom link. You will get the password. You can come to one class or you can come to all 10 classes. I think there's five weeks, two classes a week. Please come. Check in with yourself. Notice how you're feeling right now. And then we're going to do a check-in at the end of April, May 1st, and see how you are feeling after spending a month dancing. And again, all ages, all sizes, all abilities. If you're thinking, I can't do it, I'm not a dancer, it's okay. That's why you're here. If you are a dancer, wonderful. If you're not a dancer, wonderful. Are you human? If you were a human, you can dance. Even if you think you have two left feet, even if you think I can't clap to the beat, I promise you this will help and I promise you can. We're gonna take a couple of minutes for a commercial break. And this commercial break, I am so excited about because it is my manifesto. It is a commercial around my flaunt manifesto. So don't go anywhere. Check it out. And when you come back, we will go through these five purposes of dance. I believe that women deserve to be seen for who they are, not for what they do what they look like, what they sacrifice, how well they please, or who they are in relation to others. I believe that being smart, sexy, and spiritual are not mutually exclusive concepts, and that women everywhere are tired of pretending that they are. I believe that it is time to disrupt our prevailing beliefs around what makes women worthy. It is time to empower all women to strip out of the labels, roles, scripts, judgments, and stereotypes that have been thrust upon them by a patriarchal society. Imagine a world where every woman has naked self-worth and validates, values, and shows herself without fear or shame for who she is, instead of striving to be who she thinks she should be. Imagine how unstoppable, beautiful, and free our world could be. Imagine being free to live life on your own terms, waking up every day with enthusiasm for what's to come, experiencing joy in spite of any external circumstance and falling into bed at night with the rich satisfaction of a life well lived. When we flaunt, we disrupt the silence around judgment, stereotypes, and the way others control us through the intentional mischaracterization of who we really are and what we value. When we flaunt, we are clear that the judgment of others says everything about the quality of their character and nothing about the worthiness of our own. When we flaunt, we are no longer complicit in any untruth and we stand clear in our identity and powerful in our own unshakable, naked self-worth. And we are back. And I am so excited to go through these five things with you about the power of dance. So you can completely understand why dance is so powerful 
why it's something that we humans not only do, but need. I really think like you talk about Maslow's pyramid and the hierarchy of needs. Dancing is a need. Dancing is absolutely a need. And if you go back through and look throughout history at some of the various religions and things that have prohibited dance, That's a means of control and it's controlling a primal human need and it doesn't work really well. Okay. So dance, communication, bonding, ceremony and ritual, healing and expression. Let's start with communication. Communication. Communication is difficult. How often have you said something and somebody misconstrues it? How often have you typed a post on social media and it blows up and you think, whoa, 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 wait, that's not what I meant to say, or that's what I didn't, I didn't think I was saying that. Or how many times have you read something and you've been like, oh, I can't believe so-and-so said that. And it's not exactly what they meant. How many times have you gotten in a fight with your spouse or your kids or your parents or your friends? Because there was a miscommunication. If you're like most everybody, that happens all the time. And it's really frustrating because words are limiting. (laughs) Words have different connotations and denotations. And sometimes it's really hard to communicate accurately and effectively. Also, there's the nonverbal communication. If you're saying something like you're trying to tell somebody how good something is, but you're shaking your head no, they're going to be receiving a mixed message. And they're like, well, you're telling me to go to the store, but you're shaking your head no. I don't know what to believe. The verbal go here or the nonverbal shaking your head. There's also colloquialisms. And there are words that mean different things to different people. And it makes communication hard. Is something sick because it's amazing and hip? Or is something sick because it's bad and it's damaged and it's diseased? Communicating is hard. Not to mention different languages, different cultures, things like that. Dance is a pure method of communication Because it transmits emotion. It transmits feelings. No, I can't go dance you my phone number. (laughs) But I can dance you my energy. I can dance flirtatiously in a way that means I am interested in continuing this conversation with you. I am interested in you as a human. We can dance in a way that communicates understanding. Grief. Think about when you're in a state of grief and somebody hugs you or holds you. Or when you hug or hold them, you rock. You sway. You bring somebody into the hug and you sway and you rock and you hold them. Even the way we rock babies is a method of communication. And it's that dance. It's that lullaby. It's that comfort. We communicate through dance. The mating ritual, the wedding dances, the joy, the connection, the honoring. I mentioned earlier, you know, the mother-son dance, the father-daughter dance, the couple's first dance. All of these dances are a way of communicating. It's like I communicate, I am your daughter and you are, you know, my son and we are now a couple together. It's all a form of communication. Yes, it's got that ritual piece to it as well and we'll go into that, but it's communicating. What does this mean now? Grief, what does this mean now? I am here to hold you. I will rock you. I will twirl you. I will guide you. And it's communication on that pure 
energy wavelength. Music does that too. When we listen to songs, we can allow that rhythm and that vibration and that music to communicate that which oftentimes has no words. In yoga Lesque, we have guided activities, but we also have some freestyle where you can just communicate, where you can just flow, where you can imagine, visualize, or pretend that somebody is there in front of you and you can move in and out and you can communicate all of that stuff that's inside that you can't seem to get out, that you don't want to get out sometimes because you're afraid. And dance lets you communicate that. The second reason that dance is so powerful is because it bonds us to others. I was talking about this earlier in terms of COVID and social distancing. We're not in each other's arms right now. We're not hugging. We're not shaking hands. We're not rubbing shoulders. We are separate from people right now. And that's disconcerting to the human psyche. When we are moving in synchronicity, we feel connected. Think about concerts. Your arms are up. In the old days, it was the cigarette lighter. Right now, it's the cell phone. And we're waving side to side. We feel at one with the crowd because we are at one with the crowd. We are moving. We are connected. We are all hearing the same song. We are all beaming that love from our hearts and we're all waving our arms side to side. Think about it as a sporting event. The wave as it goes around the stadium. Woo! We're moving in synchronicity. We're sending the wave around and it goes faster and it goes slower and it builds and it dies. And we are one with everybody in that stadium. And we are there for our team. And we are connected. We are in community. Dance clubs. Think about it with a dance club when you're on a dance floor and it's packed. Everybody's jumping at the same time. Line dancing. Everybody's moving in synchronicity across the floor. Great finding right, going forward, backwards. And then you all turn and you're all facing the different way and you're looking left and you're looking right. And you're like, I hope I got it. Oh, it's great find. Oh, it's a tap. It's a turn. It's an up. It's a down. And it's thrilling and it feels so good. And these people are your friends and you've never met them. And you're like, yeah, we're doing this together. Moni, Moni. Dun, 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 dun. We're all jumping at the same time. We're all getting down. We're getting quiet. We're yelling the lyrics that we, the, 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 the additional lyrics at the same time as everybody else. We're pumping our arms. It's raising the roof, getting down. A little bit louder now, a little bit louder now, a little bit softer now, a little bit softer now. The joy of that is doing it with everybody else. YMCA, YMCA. Can you listen to that and not move a little bit? I got to do the letters. I've got to do the letters. Everybody else does it. So then when we see other people doing it, it's this community. Ha, you got that. Woohoo. Yep, you're doing it a little bit louder now. Woo, you know the lyrics to sing the, the bonus lyrics. Woohoo. A little bit softer now. Woohoo. Y M C. Ooh, line dance. Yeah, I know how to do this. Oh, this is the part where we it brings us together. We need to be brought together right now because we're all lonely. Even if we're used to working on our own, we're lonely in a different way right now. And it's taken its toll on all of us in slightly different ways. Especially burlesque and bubbly builds that community because I'm teaching you some like choreography, like a line dance, like YMCA, like doing the wave. 
That's all choreography. You know what to do when the wave comes to you. You stand up and you wave your arms. You know what to do during YMCA. You know what to do during a little bit louder now and a little bit softer now. You know what to do with the boot scoop bo boogie. You know what to do with the electric slide. Even if you don't totally know the whole thing, you're like, oh yeah, there's this part. You go forward and you go back and then you can learn it. And then there's that sense of satisfaction and community and joy. That's what burlesque and bubbly is about. It's about learning the dance. It's about sharing that dance with others. And it's about laughing and getting it right and getting it wrong. And laughing when it's right and laughing when it's wrong. It's about community. So burlesque and bubbly, I highly, highly, especially now, encourage you to join. Because it's that choreography, it's that community, it's that coming together. Giving you the opportunity to bond with others. Now, the third thing, the third reason why dance is so important is around ceremony and ritual. And this ties in very much, I think, with that bonding aspect of things. And also looking ahead, it ties in with healing, but it's that ceremony and it's that ritual. It's, it's that transition point. Wedding vows don't change the relationship between two people. It's a vow. It's a moment in time. It's, it's a ritual. It signifies something. Same thing with a divorce. Having somebody sign the decree doesn't actually change something. It's a ritual. It's a common understanding between you, between another person, between the whole community that we are now married or we are now divorced. I've heard people say, and I believe this to be true too, that growing up is harder when there's not a ritual around it. And that for girls around the time of menstruation, it's important to have a ritual around that, that you are stepping in to puberty, that you are going, stepping into a next chapter of your life. And that for boys, that whole vision quest is really important because it's that test of manhood. And again, so many cultures have tests of manhood and some are really gross. And it's not like I'm saying we need to go do all these really difficult things, but it is important to have a ritual and ceremony around things. A wedding ceremony is important because it marks that transition. Ceremony is important. As moms, oftentimes there's a ceremony around the first day of school with your kids. You know, take a picture, you get your school clothes, it's the first day, yay! It's the last day, yay! Ceremony and ritual are important, especially when everybody around you understands what that ceremony and ritual is about. And that's where dance comes in. In every culture throughout time, we have used dance as a means of ceremony and ritual, except right now. Yes, we still have the traditional dances around weddings. Yes, we still have some traditional dances around things, but not like we did in the past. We danced to give thanks for crops. We danced, you know, to bring rain. We danced for a, um, a successful hunt. We danced around end of life. We danced around birth. We danced around illness. Ceremony and ritual is really important. And how can we bring dance as a form of ceremony and ritual into our life today? You can dance on your own. I encourage you to dance on your own. Whether it's just listening to music in the car and letting your shoulders move or tapping your toes, or when you get up in the morning, if you have an alarm with a musical beat, moving, turning on your power song in the day, or structuring a song and a dance and a ritual around things. I love nothing more than having my end of work ritual in the evening to signify the transition from work to night. 
That's what both burlesque and bubbly and yoga lesque will help you do. They will help find songs and find rhythms and find steps and find meaning. How often have you heard, especially now during COVID, that just days blend together, weeks blend together? You know, that is a blurs day, the, you know, 4, 13th, 12th of, you know, whatever month. It is blurs day. We don't know where we're at. We need things to mark time, mark space, mark ritual. Dance is a way to do that. How would it feel to have your transition out of work dance? Bring your heart rate up a little bit. Move your body. Celebrate that you're done with work. And move into the rest of your day. What about ritual over people coming home? There's a lot that can and should be done around dance as a form of ceremony and ritual. We don't tend to acknowledge ourselves and the work that we do and how hard it is. We just kind of go on to the next thing, go on to the next thing. Yep, I graduated. Yep. I got a job. Yep. I completed that project. Yep. And sadly, oftentimes, and I did a show on this not too long ago with women and alcohol, oftentimes we celebrate around alcohol. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with celebrating around alcohol, except that come on, we can do better than that. Do you hear that noise? My cat is knocking a picture off the wall right now. <laughs> we should celebrate around or celebrate with dance. Dance incorporates our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our energy fields, and it is a perfect way to celebrate. It's not going to make you fat. It's not going to make you unhealthy. It's going to make you better. It is the perfect way to celebrate, which leads right in to that next, that fourth reason why dance is important. And that's because it heals. And yes, I'm actually saying that dance is healing. Dance is very healing. Let me tell you why. It heals because we're moving our bodies. It makes us breathe more deeply and more powerfully. Moving is good. We're made to move. We're made to stretch and bend. We're made to leap and jump and play. Do you remember being a kid and just leaping around, climbing the stairs, swinging on the bars? I used to take a balloon, just a regular old balloon, and I would fill it up. And I would just bat it around and I would dance and I would get on chairs and I would twirl and I would go outside and I'd roll. We are meant to move. Moving feels good physically, yes, but moving also helps us process. We are kinesthetic processors. We are not meant to be still and stable. We are meant to move. Moving helps us access different areas of the brain. It's not woo-woo, it's science. Even eye movement, eye movement, up left, up right, up, down left, down right, there's eye accessing cues that can tell us which area of the brain is firing. We move our eyes one direction or the other when a different area of the brain is moving. The right hemisphere controls the left, uh, right hemisphere of the brain controls the left side of the body. The left hemisphere of the brain controls the right side of the body. We are linked, our bodies with our brains, our bodies with our brains, with our emotions. We heal through movement. If you've heard of EFT, emotional freedom technique, it's tapping. It's a physical tapping of the body. It's a tapping of the meridians. Acupressure and acupuncture also deal with the meridians and the physical body and the way the physical body relates to the energetic and the emotional body. Physical therapy, yes, it is 
doing repatterning for the muscles, but it's also moving the body to help heal the emotions. EMDR is the eye movement to help you deal with trauma. So you're remembering the trauma at the same time you're moving your eyes and it helps decrease that level of trauma. Movement is enormously healing. Rhythmic movement is enormously healing. Communicating, bonding, ritual, ceremony, that is all healing. Can you imagine the joy and the relief that you would feel after a traumatic event if you had a group of people dancing around you to that same beat, to that same rhythm, and that you could look around and everybody's like doing the wave or doing the YMCA or that you're line dancing with everybody and you know it's for you. And you can just let that emotion flow. It's incredibly healing. One of the things that I do in yoga lesk, because yoga lesk is incredibly healing, is I tie movement to each of the chakras, like the root chakra, the red root chakra is the chakra that deals with the energy of safety and security. The burlesque move that I put with that is the bump and the grind because it's a bam, bump, uh, grind, bam, bump, uh, grind. And it all deals with the movement in that hip and that root chakra. So if you've got some concerns over safety and security, what you want to do is like oh, wilt and shut down and be fearful. But when you can bring that bump, boom, bump, grind, dance movement to it, you start getting your confidence back. You're like, yeah, bam, boom, bam, boom, I've got this. And you start beating that drum of healing as you're bam, 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 bumping those hips side to side. And it helps. In yoga lusk, that second chakra up, the sacral chakra, is all around prowl and the energy of prowling for sweetness, for pleasure, for satisfaction, for creativity. And again, when you're feeling beat up, like I'm not worthy of any of this, I can't spend any money on me, I'm just awful, there's nothing joyful. If you can put in that prowl, mm, kitty cat, swish, prowl, mm, mm, sweetness. I'm going to hunt. Mm, this is mine. Bam, I'm hunting this and I enjoy the fruits of my labor. It makes you feel better. It heals you. It heals you. Every single time I've taught yoga lesk, somebody cries. And it should be that way. Just about every single time I've taught burlesque and bubbly, somebody calls afterwards and they are crying because it's healing, because we've set something free, because it's a catharsis. And all of a sudden you can release, move into that, express that pain, express that sorrow and allow yourself to heal. Which brings me right to that fifth and that last reason that dance is so important. And that's because of expression. Now I said earlier, we as women have had our expression shut down. Historically speaking, and in the present day, we have had our expression shut down. There's so much right now around, you know, freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. All I hear about is freedom. You know, people want to be free not to wear a mask. People want to be free to carry guns. People want to be free. People don't, people want to be free to say everything on social media. You hear all of this stuff around freedom of expression. And some of it as a lawyer drives me a little bit crazy, to be honest. <laughs> because expression begins within. And so often, and, and hear me through this. So often we think that expression has to be out there when it really just has to be in here. And once we learn how to express what is in here, 
it translates to what's out there in an entirely different way. And it's not that we don't need expression out there as much. It's just that it's safer because we are all so free because we understand how to truly express. And we don't need these big showy things around self-expression because we are fully expressed. Expression. Expression of thought, words, deeds, clothing, all of the ways that we express ourselves. It can all be done through dance. We can express our beauty, our ability to expand and stretch, our strength, our grit, our determination, our sensuality, our joy, our pain, our confusion. We can express through movement. One of my favorite things to do in yoga lesk is to take the emotion that we're feeling now. I start the class checking in. How do you feel right now? What's going on with you? And what is your intention? Are you feeling encumbered and you want to be free? Are you feeling tangled up and you want to be clear? Are you feeling just angry? And you want to be neutral. How is it that you're feeling now? And how do you want to feel? And then one of the things we do is we take that emotion of how you feel now and we put movement to it. And there's no right and there's no wrong. How does it, how do you, how does anger move? How does stress move? How does tangled up move? How does celebratory move? How does free move? And it gives you a chance to express as freedom to express as beauty, to express as whatever it is. And then you can take yourself from how you are, and then you can start moving how you want to be. In one of the chapters in my book, Flaunt, Drop Your Cover and Reveal Your Smart, Sexy, and Spiritual Self, one of the chapters, I have the chakra walk. And the chakra walk is a simple activity on the surface, but it is really deep and powerful once you start doing it. All the chakra walk is, is feeling the energy of each chakra and walking as if. We already talked about the root and the sacral chakra. Let's move up to the solar plexus um, chakra. The solar plexus chakra is right between your ribs. And that's the seat of your power. So if you were doing the chakra walk, you would move. And if you were doing yoga last, you would dance. Dance in a way that you have no power. That you are powerless. That you are completely not yourself, that anything you did was wrong, that anything that you said was wrong, how would you move or walk or dance as one who has no personal power? Embody that, feel that, express that. Because when you start understanding what it looks like to express as one with no power, you can start recognizing those movements and that expression in yourself, because often it's a subconscious state. And when we feel betrayed by life, we're like, why didn't they notice me at work? Why do I never have any power? Why does my partner put, put up? Why am I so put upon? Well, perhaps you're moving and expressing as one with no power. And how would you know that until you've had the opportunity to dance it and to practice and to get to know it? And then like I say in the chakra walk, like I do in yoga lesk, dance and move and walk and express as one who is completely in their power, not who is abusing their power, but who is in their full power, who is in their divine feminine power. 
who is settled and secure, who trusts themselves. How do you move? How do you sit as a queen, as a goddess? How do you dance? And then you breathe and you move and you dance and you walk and you hold stillness in that power. Dance is also stillness. And then you recognize how it feels to be in your power, how to move in your power, how to talk from a place of power, how to express in stillness and in movement and in silence and in joy and in grief and in all of those emotions, but in a place of power. And then when you recognize that, you can start owning that and being that. And then what you find is life starts working out better for you. It absolutely does. And those are the five reasons why dance is so primal and so important to you. No matter what's going on in your life, things will go on in your life. Things have gone on in your life. Do you want to be happy and joyful and present? Do you want to wake up with enthusiasm for what the day holds? Do you want to live from a place of happiness and joy and contentment all day, no matter what goes on, good or bad? And do you want to fall into bed at night, every night with that sense of rich satisfaction that, hey, that was a day well lived? If you want to do that, then you must dance. You must dance. You absolutely must untangle yourself from everything around you. You must embrace your sexy. Learn what you're attracted to. You must feel aroused. And then start re-choreographing your life, your day, your energy through dance. And I am giving you the gift of dance all April long, 10 times, five burlesque and bubbly classes, five yoga less classes on Zoom. No excuse why you can't attend. Go to Flaunt Studios with an S, flauntstudios.com. Put in your email. I will send you the Zoom link. That's it. There is no obligation. Just show up and dance and communicate and bond and have some ceremony and have some ritual and heal and express. Burlesque and bubbly. Is about that healing, that expression and that bonding. And it's every Friday, three o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Mountain, five o'clock Central, six o'clock Eastern. Friday, happy hour, strip out of the week and move into the weekend with joy. And Yoga Lesk is on Sundays. And that's about expression and healing. Sundays, eight o'clock Pacific, nine o'clock Mountain. 10 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock Eastern. Join me for Yoga Lesk so you can learn how to move, how to stand, how to go into your week so you can create the exact kind of week that you desire. Let's flaunt. Let's put that ritual around your life, stripping out of the week, then creating that next week. And after four weeks of those rituals stripping out and starting anew, you are going to feel so different and so powerful and so in control that you're going to be able to recognize the way you feel, the way you move when you're in alignment versus when you're not. And you will be able to start moving, start acting, start breathing, start processing in a way that only brings more good to you. Flauntstudios.com to sign up. It's only in April. This is only free for April. You can pay after that, but it's free for April only. So join me, flauntstudios.com. Have an amazing week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here and for listening. I challenge you, whatever 
you have the opportunity today to just turn on a song and let your body move to the music, tap those toes, move those fingers, break out into a full dance. I don't care, but just recognize what an incredible gift you have as a human to be able to move in time with the music and to be able to use that power of dance. Have an incredible week. And as usual, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are because who you are is always more than enough. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. Overcome the need to please and find the uninhibited joy of being exactly who you are right now. Come find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. Find out more and get your free gift at lauracheadle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com.